Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to the Devereaux Committee of Pro Wrestling, presented by the Idiot Radio Network, offering a weekly look into the world of professional wrestling with guest interviews, news, results, and much more. Now here's your host, Stephon Devereaux. Stephon Devereaux. Devereaux Committee of Pro Wrestling. We are back here on Angry Kids 24-7 Radio. Yes, my long vacation is over, and I'm home. Ha-ha, <laughs> I'm home, baby, I'm home. Welcome to the show. Yes, welcome back. Got a lot to talk about today. We're going to talk a little bit. AEW, NXT, Raw, SmackDown, a lot of good stuff. We're going to talk about all of them. We're going to talk about the controversy that's going on with uh, WWE superstar, young WWE superstar, uh, Lars Sullivan. Oh, oh, man. I don't know why these guys even speak. I don't know why these people speak. If you guys are hating your heart, please keep it to yourself because that karma hits back so much harder for those who hate. But before we get into that, we're going to talk about something very special coming up. And I uh, want to shout out my man, yeah, Big Tank, bringing the U back. Undisputed Championship Wrestling returns. Returns January 31st. Dawson, PA. Yeah, back from the dead. That's what you see, W. Undisputed Championship Wrestling is talking about back from the dead. And uh, when we come back from our first break, we're going to talk a little bit about that. We're going to talk a little bit about AEW, like I said. We're going to talk uh, about the other top stories in professional wrestling. Uh, but I want to thank you for joining us today. And just hold tight. We're going to get this first break out of the way. And we're going to talk some pro wrestling here on the Deborah Committee of Pro Wrestling. We'll be right back after this first break. You're listening to Angle. Kids 24 7. Angle Kids 24 7. How to text a guy to keep him interested? Hmm, it's a question many women ask daily. Well, Amy North believes she has found the answer with How to Text a Guy to Keep Him Interested. It's a new course that she has put together and it's helping ladies all across the world. You can go to How to Text a Guy to Keep Him Interested. Weebly.com for more information. Amy says she has the answer, so find out there at How to Text a Guy to Keep Him Interested. Weebly.com. Recovery from mental and substance use disorders is real. You can recover. It's possible. It happens every day. Never give up on yourself. Discover hope and help. I thought I was too far gone. I wasn't. Join the voices for recovery. The world is a beautiful place again. For 24-hour free and confidential information and treatment referral for mental and substance use disorders for you or someone you know, call 1-800-662-HELP. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. I'm getting older. Do I need to worry about falling? Yes, you do. Each year, one in four people 65 and older will experience a fall, and many will be serious. The majority of falls happen at home, so remove things that could make you trip and install handrails to keep you steady. To learn more about the steps you can take to help prevent a fall, please talk to your doctor. You can also visit aarpfoundation.org or medicaremadeclear.com slash falls. This message was brought to you by United Healthcare and AARP Foundation. Discover the weird trick people are using to make over $3,500 a month taking paid surveys from home. Jason White is known online as the king of paid surveys. He's been taking paid surveys online since 2009 and has earned over $274,000 just from paid surveys. He knows that may seem hard to believe, but it's 100% true and verified. Large multi-billion dollar corporations need your feedback and suggestions about their products and are willing to pay huge sums of money to get it. If you go to bit.ly 
backslash making money with surveys. He'll show you how to get your piece of the pie. Companies desperately need your opinion and will pay you cash for taking short surveys. Plus, you'll get $50 for taking your first paid survey. So go to bit.ly backslash making money with surveys. Stephon Devereaux, Devereaux Putty of Pro Wrestling, Angry Kids 24 7 Radio. Yes, we are back. Long vacation over. I told the people, I told the people I was going to come back after the uh, holidays. We're not even at New Year yet. So, we're going to end the year out with a bang. We're going to talk some pro wrestling, talk a little music, and uh, we're going to have some fun. But let's get into it. I've been waiting so long to do this. Oh, I've been biting my tongue. <laughs> I've been biting my tongue because I wanted to give these guys some time. And I think that's sort of why I stayed away as long as I have because I wanted to see how this thing was going to play out over the first few months. And it is playing out exactly the way I kind of – I thought it would turn out this way. I really did. And people, uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about AEW. AEW, yes. <laughs> man. Dynamite. Oh, man. Well, I think that thing that fizzled out turned into a dud. And I'm going to be, I, yeah, I said it. AEW Dynamite has turned into AEW duds. You can be mad all you want, wrestling fans. Those who love AEW, you can be mad all you want. But let me start in one place. I'll tell you whose fault this is. It's your fault. You know why it's your fault? Because you went out here for months and talked about, oh, they're going to be the greatest wrestling promotion in the WWE done. I think they're going to get it. Yeah. You don't say, remember, you said it. WWE will be done in three months. So let's see. October 1st, AEW premiered. It's one. Two, three. Three months. Three months on the air. We're about to go into the fourth. And what has AEW done? They started out with a bang. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they, they blew up that first night. They blew up that first night in more ways than one. Because that first night on the air, they drew over a million and a half fans. Out the gate. Out the gate. That was after NXT had its head start. That was after all the hype about NXT and AEW. Fans still chose AEW on that very first night. They chose. They said, you know, let's, let's give this new company a chance. You know, we know some of the talent, Chris Jericho, you know, Cody Rhodes, Austin Rhodes. The Young Bucks. Shouts to my man, Jim Cornette, Kenny Olivier. Oh, yeah, I get it now. Let's start there. Matter of fact, let's start there. So people were upset because Jim Cornette, for quite some time, has been bashing this product. And actually, he's been, it's not just a product, he's bashing the stars of this product because he's been doing that for quite some time. Let's start there. What's going on with AEW? Why are they falling so hard? Like I said, they started with a 1.5 rating. These guys are struggling to get to 800,000. Three months in, struggling. 1.5 million viewers. Now they're struggling to get 800,000 in the third month. Why is that? Why is that? Besides me blaming you stupid fans, which I did already, I want to give you a couple other things we're going to, uh, you know, put our finger on and say this is the reason why AEW hasn't been successful. Well, let's start with the top. Leadership. The owner. Mr. Tony Khan. 
he's gonna go and kick Fisher's ass because he's he's the greatest. He just said, do it. You know what Tony Khan is? And no disrespect to you, Mr. Khan, because I know for a fact that if anyone else was given your opportunity, Dixie Carter, <coughs> excuse me, was given this opportunity, oh man, they do the same thing. But Tony Khan, let's start with you. You came in here cocky. You came in here feeling yourself because of your pay-per-views. The pay-per-views were, according to the numbers, successful, which I think numbers do lie when it comes to pay-per-view buy rates, when they're charging you $50 per pay-per-view for storylines that has never been put on television at the time, of course. But let's look into Tony Khan. You as a leader, Mr. Khan, you know what your job is? Your job is to put the best product on television. Now, you claim that you're the guy who's, you know, pretty much putting all this in order, the booking and so forth, and Tony Khan, fire yourself. You should fire yourself. Bring in someone who knows how to run professional wrestling television. This crap that you're putting on right now, you know what this is? This is what we used to call back your BS. And you made it clear that this is the direction that you're going to go when you sat there and spared. Or, excuse me, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, because you pretty much spared his career out, there, man. And we're talking about Sean Spears. When you came in the ring and you sat there and stunned Sean Spears. Here's a, the AEW apologist. But it was at the show. It wasn't on TV. But you know what that, you know the message that that sends? Because we are in the internet era where everybody has access to everything. And the message that you sat there and showed us and gave us was that, damn, damn, we're no different than what you wrestling fans have been crying about. We're no different than Vince McMahon's WWE. What was that that stun that stunners needed for? What, what, what did you need to do that for? What, to show your dad, you know, the, the owner of the Jacksonville Jaguars, and you see that mess down there? You wanted to show your dad? Hey, dad, look, daddy, I, I wanted to, I could get in the ring and be pro radio, yo. You want to play pro wrestler, but, but dude, go get trained and then become a wrestler. But you are the owner of a company that's trying to compete against the damn throne, bruh. Yeah, the throne. I said it. The throne. The WWE is the throne. Vince McMahon is the king. H is the next king. And you decided to throw the throw, to throw those stones at the throne, and what happened? No, Cody Rose decided to take a sledgehammer to the throne and thought it was cute at a pay-per-view earlier this year. But look what you guys are doing. You guys are doing the same thing that they did. And you guys can even draw a goddamn rating. At least when they do it, fans pop the, co- the next week. They come back. To see what's going to happen next. No one gives a damn what you guys are doing. Now, Tony Khan, that's your fault. You're the owner. Your fault. Your fault. Now, let's take a step back. Oh, no, excuse me. A step forward. Because I don't think the AEW fans want to take it. Oh, goodness. Because I can go back to some of the things they were telling me. They were telling me. Arguing with me when I said, guys, just hold your horses. Let's see how this thing plays out. I remember when a young lady bought a wrestling company or her parents bought her a wrestling company. And everyone said, the person was going to destroy Vince McMahon. And then look what happened. Oh, yeah, horrible, trash. End up selling the company years later. 
Yeah. Let's take a step forward. There's a difference between TNA and AEW. You know what TNA did so well in the beginning when Jeff... Now, look, I knew about AJ Styles just like a bunch of other indie wrestling, wrestling fans and indie wrestling promoters and anybody associated to the indie wrestling business, okay? We knew who AJ Styles was. I mean, AJ was one of the greatest guys in the locker room. He was so cool. But when he got that opportunity to shine in TNA, you know what that kid did? He took advantage of it. Now, you see where he's at right now. On his way to the WWE Hall of Fame, guaranteed. Mark my words. This kid's going to be a Hall of Famer. He's having some great matches with Randy Orton, by the way. Oh, my God. The reviews I heard this past week by Randy and AJ at the WWE event here in Pittsburgh. Woo-wee! Oh, my God. Anyway. Shout out to my son because he's the guy who told me that. Anyway. TNA developed new stars. They made you want to see AJ Styles. They made you want to see Christopher Daniels. They made you want to see Elix Skipper. Where's my man Elix Skipper at? Anyway, they made you want to see these new, hot, young guys from the indie scene. They they wanted you to sit back and say, oh, my goodness, I cannot wait to see these guys next week. Jeff Jarrett, because of his father, of course, and his grandmother, you know, third generation promoter, knew how to get his guys over. AEW, on the other hand, what the hell are you guys doing? You got the guys, the, the new crop of AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels and, you know, Frankie Gazaria and those guys with the Young Bucks, Kenny Omega, Sean Spears, Hangman Page. You got the new crop. The guy, the, the, the guy that everyone's been talking about for two years now, three years, the thief for the next guys. The guys that the WWE's been trying to sign, but they haven't been able to because they want their freedom. Oh, my goodness. See, sometimes you can't let everybody be free. I'm sorry. Now you see what I'm talking about. Because these guys, they get their opportunity in TNA. And what happened? I mean, excuse me, AEW, what happened? What happened? Please tell me. It hasn't worked out since. Why? Why? Because they got their freedom from a guy who doesn't know how to really book pro wrestling. Tony Khan. See, let's come back to you, Tony. Always coming back to you. So you're not getting these guys over. Now, if you could compare this to the NXT show, their guys are getting over. On a national stage. And people can say, well, they were on WWE Network for years. Okay, who cares? Well, that's, I'm, you, know, you know I love speaking like these AEW fans. Because that's usually what they sound like. The Apologist. Could be a name of a new wrestling clique, actually. The Apologist. Ha! But we'll talk about that another time. But NXT, their stars are, man, these dudes are being built properly. These guys are getting over. Wrestling fans are excited to see them the next week. I mean, goddamn, I never knew who this damn Keith Lee guy was. Now I want to see what they're going to do with them. Did I care about the Undisputed Era? Hell no. Besides my man Adam Cole, that's my dude, dog. Shout out Adam Cole. Great dude. Former UCW guy. Shout out Adam Cole. But I want to see what these guys are doing now. Because NXT is giving me a reason to want to see these guys. AEW, on the other hand, dude, let me tell you something. They, I think they're, they're just betting on the fact that, well, everybody want to see Chris Jericho, which is cool. It's always great to have a, a superstar on top of your roster, you know, and a couple of mid-card guys and the rest are young dudes. I get it. I love the roster. I love the way it's set up. I do. And I love the way Chris Jericho is getting the younger guys over, making Jungle Boy look like a star. Making my man from SCU look like a star. But then where do they go with it afterwards? These guys aren't going anywhere. They're not. What are they doing afterwards? Jim Cornette gave a perfect scenario for how to get Jungle Boy over. 
AEW sounded like they were, I mean, looked like they were doing exactly what Jim Cornette said. Go back and listen to his show. Shout out to Jim Cornette, by the way. Got to give the dude this credit. I'm not going to sit there and take the credit. But they the same exact storyline that he gave out a few months ago on how to get Jack Perry over. He sat there and got this. They did it. And, man, the fans were hot. I'm like, man, this is a really good match. Ten minutes, man, come on, this is beautiful. We kind of knew he was going to win or last. So you got that right, but no different than a couple weeks before that with the other dude from SCU. You got that, and then you did nothing with him. And I expect you to do nothing with Jack Perry. <sighs> You're not getting these guys over. You're not getting them over. You're not making wrestling fans want to pay. <laughs> Matter of fact, they don't even have to pay. They don't even want to invest five minutes into your show anymore to see these guys. The only person who's not losing ratings, Chris Jericho. Why is that? Um, Chris Jericho is uh, one of the greatest of all time. Uh, He's been doing this for 30 years. He was taught by one of the greatest teachers of all time, at least the family. He knows how to do this. Here's another guy who's getting over without really doing much. Cody Rhodes. Loving it. But they got him up against or in a somewhat of a feud with 15 different people. One week is the Dark Order. One week is the MJF. And one week is the dad going, whatever he, well, uh, actually, I like Butcher and Blade. Those are my dudes. I can't lie. I actually like that gimmick. And everybody, yeah, people were right. The butcher gimmick is nice. Dude got it a little, I think dude can work. Anyway. Just see, let's back up here. Cody, <coughs> excuse me, MJF. Sounds like a great match. This match can make so much money. Great view. Excuse me. Make so much money. We know Dusty taught his son how to make money with these feuds. We know that for a fact. So now Cody putting giving MJF the stage so he can get over. And what does AEW do? You get MJF one week. You get him this, oh, maybe another week. You probably won't see him for a couple weeks. Like, what the hell are you doing? He's one of your best talkers. You know, the, the people who bring fans in, the people who make fans want to hate them enough to – pay to see the good guy beat their ass. Yeah, one of your best talkers. The gimmick, man, the, the look is incredible. They need to put him or have Tully Blanchard be his mentor or his advisor. But see, the great thing about MJF, man, and, I, and no disrespect to Sean Spears, but you're done, dude. Tony Khan, Tony Khan did what he did, you're done. Get, you know, So they can move Telly Blanchard somewhere else. Give him to MJF. Let him be the advisor. Somewhere down the line, you know MJF is going to, thanks too much of himself, he's not going to need him anymore. He's going to cut him. Go back, whatever. Step him in the back. That's what I wanted to say. Not literally cut him, people. I'm sorry. (laughs) But think about that. Awesome. They want to have Telly Blanchard be a manager? Have him manage MJF. Let that get over. I think it would be sick. Honestly, in my opinion. Anyway. You got these stars. Or guys that you know that can be stars, like MJF, and you're not even bringing, letting him be on the show regularly. He's one of the reasons why I want to watch the show, and I hate to say it, 
Because when I first seen it, I said, this is a goddamn joke. Why are you ribbing me, guys? Why are you ribbing me? I don't like that. When the wrestlers rib me, because I'm a nice guy. When the companies rib me because I'm the skinny dude that everybody wants to make fun of and call me Urkel. It's all love, of course. But anyway, the one guy who I really want to see every week and do the same thing that he does every when he first started coming out is that goddamn Orange Cassidy. Orange Cassidy has the makings to be such a star in this business doing nothing, absolutely nothing, which is incredible to me. And he's getting so over because guys like myself are enjoying this dude just stepping in the ring out of nowhere. See him just anywhere. And he got his hands in his pocket with them damn sunglasses on. And he just looks like the biggest asshole in the business, excuse my language, but he just looks like also the coolest dude in the business. Like, I'm just so cool, I don't got to do nothing. And I love it. And then when he does his little kicks, his little kicks, and the fans, are they get behind it, okay, yeah. Would it work in the WWE? No. Will it work in TNA? No. Ring of Honor? Maybe. AEW, yes, because it already is working. Get, let this kid be on TV as much as possible. These are the guys you build around. The fans, the ones that they just grow to love, like myself. I'm one of those type of fans. See, I don't just start marking out for a guy when he comes out the first week. No, you got to grow on me. Because that's the way wrestling used to be about letting something grow, a storyline grow, a wrestling career grow. That's what it used to be about. That's how we got guys over back in the day, one week at a time. It's like if it doesn't work this week for you guys, they don't come back. Well, guess what? Here's a few things that we feel shouldn't come back. The Dark Order. Get them off of your television screen. Brandy Rhodes. Figure out something else to do with her. But actually, I'm going to give it another week or two because I didn't mind what happened this past week with Awesome Kong. She came in there and took care of some Bennett, did her thing, then left. I like that. I like stuff like that. It wasn't too long. I love it. So we'll give that another week. All these damn Japanese wrestlers, these women wrestlers, look, dude, look. I know I'm not beefing against the Japanese wrestlers, the women wrestlers, because I want, oh, he's sexy, she don't like women wrestling. I love women's wrestling. I'm not a big fan of Becky Lynch, but I love women's wrestling. I love Charlotte Flair. T and, I mean, excuse me, AEW Charlotte, that's where you need to be. Let's just be real. Let's just be real. You need to be there. You can help that roster. You can help that roster. But these Jap- so many Japanese women wrestlers, too many, they got to go. The one, the one chick who's doing the uh, Freddie Mercury gimmick, I actually like that. And then it's other, they just brought the new black chick on her. I can't even remember her name right now. Off the top of my head. Awesome. Not awesome, Kong. I'll have more information on her next week, by the way. But you can do without a lot of the other Japanese women wrestlers. You've killed Britt, uh, Britt Baker's career or her gimmick. It's over. You killed that. Real quick, we're going to extend the show. We're going to go another 15 minutes. I know we usually do a half hour, but we're going to go another 15 minutes on demand. So just stick with us as we transition over here on Angry Kids 24-7 Radio. We'll be right back. Step on Devereaux. You're listening to Angry Kids 24-7 Radio. Angry Kids 24-7. 
Okay, Stefan Devereaux's back. We're going to do another 15 minutes, so this part of the show is now on demand. I love it. Yeah, the way these things work out sometimes. Just had a lot to talk about, because I still need, I didn't even get into Laura Sullivan yet. But anyway, we're going to finish up with AEW. The Japanese, I mean, so, too many Japanese wrestlers, women wrestlers, too many. It, look, I know, it sounds like I'm hating. I get it, but I'm not hating. I am being real. These are my true feelings, how I feel about this company. I mean, dude, they got a few things that we can actually sink our teeth into and say, okay, let me check this out. One of them I know is not the Hangman Page storyline. How, how are you butchering this? You built this guy up as one of your next brightest stars in the business. Had him go up against Chris Jericho for the AEW Championship, for the first AEW Championship match. And now hes he doesn't know if he wants to be friends with Kenny Omega or not. What? I mean, seriously. It's little things like that that are just driving me crazy. And it's just driving me crazy. Imagine the other wrestling fans who have grown up in an era of world-class championship wrestling being booked by Gary Hart. World NWA championship wrestling booked by Dusty Rhodes. Smoky Mountain wrestling booked by Jim Cornette. Ohio Valley wrestling booked by Jim Cornette and Danny Davis, mainly Jim Cornette. Attitude error. So when they actually was, you know, gaining ratings, booked by Vince Russo. We got to see so much. So much. Within a 30-year span, like 20, 25-year span, excuse me. Got to see so much, got to learn so much. Got to watch these soap operas tell consistent storylines. For years. NWA consistent storylines. Until Dusty just figured out he, you know what, let me just change this. WWE. I'm talking the Pat Patterson era. Consistent storylines. We were spoiled. And now when we watch this crap, and we're like, damn. AEW is is doing everything that y'all complained about with Vince Russo. And they're not even doing it that good. They're not even doing it that well. And come on. How is AEW drawing lower ratings than TNA did when Vince Russo was booking? And y'all complain about that, man? Think about it. How are they drawing lower ratings and they're losing every week? It's getting so bad that NXT actually beat them in the ratings a couple of times so far. That shouldn't be happening. NXT's bar is set at maybe 700 to 800,000 fans. Tops. You are AEW. You're going below that bar. And NXT is sticking where they're supposed to be. They'll gain some fans here and there. And I will say this. One of the things is those fans are not going over to watch NXT. Those fans from AEW who's losing, they're not, they're, they're, who just start, start watching, they're not going over to NXT. Look at the numbers. Don't listen to these damn smart marks who do, do their little podcasts who say, well, it's really about the 18 to 49 demographic. They, 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 you know, it's really what? No, it's not. They don't know television. They never had to make a living trying to draw ratings in order to keep a job in television. These guys do little podcasts. You know how I know? Because I do a little podcast myself. 
So hey, these are the same guys who will sit there and tell you, well, this guy decided he wants to go to this other promotion. And then next thing you know, that same guy decided to sign an extension to, I mean, you know what I'm saying, to stay with the WWE. Remember, those are the same guys. And I'm not going to sit there and give them any type of props. Because they work you guys, just like the Dagwood wrestlers work them. So don't let them sit there and tell you, hey, the ratings, no. And y'all know who the hell I'm talking about. If it ain't coming from guys like Bruce Pritchard, if it's not coming from guys like Eric Bischoff, if it's not coming from guys like Vince Russo or Jim Cornette, and I won't even throw myself in there as well because I had to do the same thing. I had to live off of my ratings or my crowd sizes. If it's not coming from guys like that who's had to do that, then you shouldn't listen to them because they have no clue. Because in today's wrestling ratings matter. Why do you think the WWE keeps trying to find ways to re-energize their product? Because ratings matter. You can't sit there and say, oh, ratings don't matter for AEW, but it sure as hell matter for SmackDown. You know why it doesn't matter for SmackDown? You know why? Because the WWE already got the check. AEW didn't get the check yet. They didn't get the check. Oh, hell no. WWE got their check already. $500 million. But they're telling you ratings don't matter. For a small company coming out of the gate, it does. And when you're losing viewership and we didn't even get into the damn attendance. No one talks about that anymore. You know why? Because, oh, you don't know? AEW, are, they're losing fans every show now. They're not even bad tickets anymore. Yes. Oh, they won't tell you that. Because they also are going to say the ratings don't matter. People are walking away from this thing. It's like, you're at the zoo, the damn gorilla just sits there and squats down, and then everyone looks and says, oh, my God, and they turn and walk away. You understand what I'm saying? Who wants to see this dude take a crap? Who wants to give a crap for this? And I know I went uh, 40 minutes talking about AEW. I've been waiting to do this. And I'm going to keep doing it now. Every single week, I'm going to keep going in on AEW until they and their fans, no, until they, AEW, realize it. The guys on top realize it. Hey, we got some things that need to change. First thing you need to do, put put Jim Ross in charge. That's the first thing you need to do. Because if there's anybody that has built relationships with professional wrestlers over the past 30, 40 years, better than Jim Ross, who, who's better? Besides Vince McMahon, who's better for this spot? What, Jerry Lawler maybe? But they didn't like Jerry Lawler too much. Put Jim Ross in charge. Let him handle the roster. Let him handle the book. Ixna Excalibur. Let Jim Ross and let Tony Schiavone do their jobs. This Excalibur guy, like a few weeks ago, when the Butcher and the Blade was introduced, this dude knew who these guys were. No one else did. Not even other commentators didn't give no explanation. Mr. Butcher, who is this guy? He's a butcher. Is he your butcher? Your mom's butcher? Your dad's butcher? Like, did you see him cut somebody? Yep. I mean, what? How is he the butcher? It's the Blade. You know how many blades I know? What, the blade? What, Wesley Slipes the blade? I mean, goddamn, B. Is he a vampire? Is he the bodybuilder blade that I know? Michael Blade? One of the top bodybuilders in the tri-state area? Is that him? Because he didn't look like that to me. I've seen Michael Blade. I've seen what Blade can do. And he's a hell of a wrestler, too. So, what? I'm, I'm, uh, thank you. No explanation whatsoever. But we're supposed to sit back and real and, oh, yeah, we know. Well, you're, oh. 
And this is why I take blood pressure medicine. <laughs> yes. It's the butcher. It's the blade. Oh, my God. Horrible. It's stuff like that that is going to keep this company from ever, ever being profitable. They got on perform- former WCW announcer Chris Cruz. They got on this man a few weeks ago, or a, few, a couple of months ago, excuse me, because he said AEW would never turn a profit. And if they did, well, my fault, this is what I added. They won't stay open long enough to turn a profit. And that was at the beginning of this dad going downfall because I seen it come in. Exploded the first show, fizzled out every other episode. Come on down to my AEW. There's so much you can do. You can get right what you want. Until you put someone else in charge. You won't do it with Jim Cornette, of course. You won't bring, you won't bring a Jim Cornette. You, hopefully, maybe, if you're smart, maybe, what if you brought in Vince Russo? You won't, you won't do that. Pat Patterson's not coming back. And if he did, he's going back to Vince. Why would he come to you guys? You need to put somebody in charge of the of the stories, the uh, the roster that someone that actually gives a damn about this business, who doesn't want to be have it be just his, his little playground, or the you know because we're executives now, you know we can do whatever we want. <laughs> you need guys like that out of power. You need a guy like Jim Ross in power. You need to get a way. You need to find a way to bring in Paul Heyman, but he's not coming. Why would he come to you? He's running the wall now. He's getting what he wants. So you helped him actually. You've helped him. Wow, AEW. Wow. Stop letting these daggone smart marks like those the, the guys who do the little podcast and have done their their wrestling newsletter for years. Stop letting these people run your show. Stop. With the little wrestlers that they like. You got a core to build around. No different than TNA did. But you can go a lot further because you actually got TNT backing you. See the way they're promoting your show. That means your show should be number one every single week. It's not... It's not. You're going to blow it. But anyway, we're going to head out of here soon. Don't forget, don't forget January 31st. I know you want to hear about Laura Sullivan. So I, who cares anymore? I really don't care about Laura Sullivan. The guy was stupid. He said some ignorant things. And guess what happens? He gets busted. He gets busted. <sighs> anyway, we won't talk about that. Maybe I'll do a, a slap, a sad podcast on a Step One Devil Show. Make, who cares? Oh, Laura Sullivan. But anyway, don't forget Dawson PA, uh, January 21st, I mean 31st, UCW returns. Now, if you want tickets, all you got to do is go to ucwprowrestling.com, get those tickets right now. I'll have more information on the show as it uh, comes up. Uh, main event, as of right now, whoo, I, you know what? I'm not even going to tell you that. I just want you to go to the website, ucwprowrestling.com. Get those tickets, check it out, and uh, we'll talk more about it as the week in the uh, early a month away from the show. Wow! But uh, as uh, the show starts to approach, and uh, I want to thank you for joining us this week. And like I said, I'll be back every week to talk about pro wrestling the way I love to talk about. And I'm not holding back any punches. I promise you that. Yeah, if you want to get mad, sue me. Stephon Devereaux, Angry Kids, twenty four seven radio, the Devereaux Committee on Pro Wrestling. We're out. You're listening. Angle Kids 24-7 Radio.